Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. In today's class, we will be seeing about cellular aging, which is the last heading under the cell injury series. So, why do people age? Because their individual cells are undergoing aging. That is why a person is aging. So, what happens? So, over the years, the recurrent cell injury which has happened has accumulated damage and that damage is going to cause decrease in the functionality of the cell which will ultimately lead to the death of the cell. So, cells are getting lost now. So, this decreased function and vitality of the cells is what is termed as cellular aging and this is regulated by certain genes also. So, what are the mechanisms by which a cell undergoes aging? So, we have four main mechanisms which is DNA damage, cellular senescence, defective protein homeostasis and dysregulated nutrient sensing. So, we will see this one by one. So, starting with DNA damage, we have already seen about the various causes of cell injury. So, in cell injury, we saw that there is production of free radicals which are also called as reactive oxygen species, right. So, these free radicals are going to cause DNA damage apart from other cellular damage as well. So, we will see about what uh, DNA damage. So, when this DNA damage is happening, it can be repaired till a certain point of time. But when it starts to accumulate, so when it starts to accumulate with age, that is with over the years, what happens is the cell cannot function properly. Okay. So, this is what happens during DNA damage. Apart from that, this free radicals also tend to induce inflammation. So, in elderly people, we can see a low grade of chronic inflammation, okay. All the time, they will have a low grade of chronic inflammation, which is sterile in nature, meaning there is no infection as such, but they will have a low grade inflammation. So, when inflammation is happening, again, inflammatory cells also produce reactive oxygen species. So, this cycle will go on and the damage will get accumulated over the years, okay. So, this DNA damage will ultimately lead to the cell death. So, this free radical mediated cell injury is the most accepted theory of cellular aging. So, when I spoke about this inflammation, I told there is going to be a low grade inflammation always associated with aging, right? So, this is what is called as inflammaging. So, as the name suggests, there is inflammation in aging and that is what is called as inflammaging, okay? DNA damage is the reason why elderly people are prone to get many diseases and cancers as well because there is continuous DNA damage which has accumulated over the years. So, the importance of this repair of DNA we will understand in the next few slides. So, there is a condition called as premature aging that is the patient is as such they are not elderly people but they had undergone aging at a very younger age itself. So, why? Because there is a uh, defect in their DNA repair mechanism. So, the DNA damage which has happened is not going to get repaired. So, this accumulated DNA damage is going to continuously happen and that will result in the cellular aging of these patients. So, we have few examples of this premature aging. So, the first one we will be seeing will be a Werner syndrome. So, Werner syndrome is also called as adult progeria syndrome because these patients will classically present post puberty that is in their early 20s they will start presenting with uh, symptoms of aging. So, prior to that they are very normal. So, how do they present with? So, in the image can you see that? So, they look like elderly people. They have thin papery skin and then they will have this hair loss or graying of the hair along, along with uh, uh, complaints which the elderly people usually have like osteoporosis, joint pain, cataracts, diabetes mellitus and they are also prone for developing many cancers. Why? Because this uh, defect in this syndrome is a Werner protein uh, which encodes a protein called as DNA helicase. So, DNA helicase is an enzyme which is needed for unwinding, unwinding of the DNA. So, during DNA replication and during DNA repair, the double stranded DNA has to unwind so that they become single stranded DNA. Only then replication and repair can happen. So, this unwinding cannot happen. So, repair is not going to happen in this patients. So, this will result in a premature aging. Moving on to the next syndrome which is Bloom syndrome and ataxia telangiectasia. These again have a defect in their DNA repair genes which is involved in the double stranded DNA breakage repair. Okay. So, these patients will also have premature aging 
The third one will be a Hutchinson Guilford progeria syndrome. Here, this is called as the progeria of childhood. Progeria, progeria literally means it is premature aging. Okay, the patient will be typically a infant in the later stages of infancy. Okay, uh, and this syndrome has also been called as Benjamin Button disease based on a movie also. So, what is the end, uh, gene which is defective here is LMNA defect. That is, it codes for a protein called as lamin A. This lamin A is a protein which is needed for uh, maintaining the stability of the nucleus. It provides the nuclear uh, envelope scaffolding. So, when this lamin A is being defective, the nucleus will undergo uh, breakage easily and the cell will die if this uh, nucleus is breaking. So, when the cell dies, again, the cell is going, uh, we are losing the cell. So, premature aging will happen. The fourth example will be a cocaine syndrome. Here again, there is an excision repair defect involving the genes ERCC6 and 8. So, here the patients will present very early just after birth itself in their early infancy phase. And here the characteristic presentation will be that of a microcephaly with photosensitivity and failure to thrive. So, we have seen about the first mechanism which is DNA damage and how DNA repair defects can lead to premature aging. So, moving on to the second mechanism which is cellular senescence. It literally means that the cells are aging. So, uh, what is the mechanism for the cellular senescence? We will be discussing in data two headings which is telomere attrition and activation of tumor suppressor gene. So, uh, normally a cell can divide only up to a particular limit which is actually 60 to 70 cell divisions after which they undergo a state of non-replicability that is they cannot divide after the 60 to 70 divisions and this is called as Hayflick effect or Hayflick limit and this is also called as replicative senescence. So why is that so? Why the cells cannot divide uh, beyond this limit? Because there of something called as telomere attrition. So let us see what is that. So what, uh, attrition means there is loss. So telomere is getting loss. So what are these telomeres? Telomeres are nothing but repeated sequence of this TTAGGG sequence which are present at the tip of the chromosome. So if this is the centromere, we have this chromosome like this and at the tips you have this telomeres. Okay. So this part is the telomeres and this telomere is what is the function of these telomeres? This is going to protect the DNA from breakage and fusion. So, they prevent the uh, chromosome from being damaged during cell division. But with in, uh, each cell division, what happens is that a part of this telomere is going to get uh, lost during each cell division. Okay. So, with continuous cell division, obviously the telomeres are going to get lost. So, to prevent this, there is an enzyme called as telomerase. Telomerase is an enzyme which actually protects the nucle uh, which protects the telomeres. So, it prevents the uh, uh, shortening of the telomeres. It is an RNA protein complex. Its own RNA it uses as a template against which it adds nucleotides to this telomere so that the telomere length is being maintained with cell division. So, normally this telomerase is not active in somatic cells but it is active in the germ cells and the stem cells. And it, this telomerase gets reactivated during cancers, thus giving the cells a state of immortality. Okay. So, this diagram will clearly uh, indicate what I mean. So, this is a very important image based question as well. So, with each cell division, we see the telomere length is going to decrease in a normal somatic cell. But in germ cells, the so, telomerase is activity is going to be present. So, this uh, telomere length is not going to decrease. So, uh, less than the stem, uh, germ cells, stem cells have a limited telomerase uh, activity. But if you see what I have marked in yellow color, these cancer cells, these are actually normal somatic cells only, but they had, they are, they have a reactivation of this telomerase. So, they can, uh, they can, they become immortal. So, the, the cancer cells become immortal because of the reactivation of this telomerase. So moving on to the next mechanism of uh, cell senescence, which is activation of tumor suppressor genes. So we have a gene called as CDKN2A, which is a tumor suppressor gene, which belongs to the INC4R family. So we'll be uh, seeing about it during neoplasia chapter uh, detail in detail. So the CDKN2A is going to encode a protein called as P16. This P16 is responsible for inhibiting a complex called as cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6. So, this cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6 
are present in the G1 S phase of the cell cycle. So, when the cells proceed from G1 to S phase, there is a check by this P16 protein which is going to inhibit this cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase. So, what will happen? The cell cannot progr uh, progress beyond this G1S phase. So, this will result in the arrest of cell cycle which is also called as the cell cycle senescence. This is actually uh, beneficial in the sense um, uncontrolled mitogenic signals which will actually push the cell into cell cycle is being prevented. This is going to have a check to the cell cycle so that uh, unwanted mitogenesis does not happen. But this tumor suppressor gene gets mutated in certain uh, tumors examples of which are melanoma and glioblastoma. This glioblastoma is a recent update wherein you call uh, when there is a CDKN2A loss we can directly call it as a glioblastoma. So, these melanoma and glioblastomas apart from other tumors they have the CDKN2A loss. So, what happens there is no check and the cell is going to progress into the cell cycle and there will be continuous mitogenesis and proliferation of the cell. So, moving on to the third mechanism by which cells undergo aging that is the defective protein homeostasis. So, normally we know that proteins are uh, folded by the help of chaperons. So, if these are not being folded properly that is when they are misfolded what happens is that it will lead to an unfolded protein response that will trigger cell death by apoptosis. This we all know. So, this protein folding is going to be defective. So, when this protein folding is going to be defective, it is going to result in apoptosis kind of cell death. And again, uh, there is impaired protein degradation. When this misfolded proteins cannot be uh, pro uh, folded properly, they have to undergo uh, protein degradation by either autophagy or ubiquitin proteasome pathway. So, autophagy we had already discussed in detail. So, this uh, if there is an impaired autophagy, what happens? this misfolded proteins are going to accumulate and that is going to cause stress to the cell and the cell is going to die and that is uh, uh, the cell, cell is either going to die or it is going to undergo aging ok. So, we do not want this to happen. So, normal aging may what happens there is a defect in the protein folding and also an impaired protein degradation and rapamycin as we all remember was a promoter of autophagy. So, autophagy is being promoted by rapamycin because it will inhibit a protein called as mTOR. So, mTOR pro, uh, pathway it is involved in cell survival and cell growth ok uh, and metabolism of the cell. So, all of this will actually inhibit autophagy. So, rapamycin is a drug which can promote autophagy uh, leading to degradation of the misfolded proteins. So, moving on to the last thing which is dysregulated nutrient sensing. So, we all know that caloric restriction to a certain amount can increase longevity. So, this uh, caloric restriction by 30 percentage is known to increase the longevity. How? Because of two things which is it is going to decrease the IGF signaling pathway and it is going to increase the sirtuins. So, what is IGF? It is nothing but insulin like growth factor. So, as the name suggests it is behaving like insulin and it is a growth promoting factor. So, this growth hormone is going to stimulate this IGF-1 and this IGF-1 as the name suggests like it is a growth factor right. So, it is going to cause an, anabo uh, cause an anabolic state. So, when a an cell enters anabolic state obviously the cell is going to undergo metabolism, growth and replication. So, all of this conditions metabolism will again lead to free radical production same for cell growth. So, during cell growth and replication what happens the DNA damage can happen right. So, we do not want this to happen. So, by inhibiting this IGF signaling we can actually increase the longevity of a person. So, another exam another uh, mechanism is by increasing sirtuins. Sirtuins are nothing but protein deacetylases. These are enzymes which are protein deacetylases. These actually are present in grapes and red wine. So, that is why consuming red wine on a regular basis in smaller quantities is beneficial for health. So, how does this sirtuins actually act? This is going to inhibit the metabolic activity. So, obviously the free radical production is going to decrease and it also increases the antioxidant on antioxidant mechanisms. So, these free radicals are being counteracted. Also, it is going to cause proper folding of the uh, proteins. So, protein misfolding is prevented. So, apoptosis is again prevented here. And if there is DNA damage, it is going to activate the DNA repair mechanisms. So, DNA damage is corrected. 
and it also increases the insulin sensitivity so it has been implicated in the treatment of diabetes mellitus so uh, we all have seen that sages and saints they don't take food and they do penance for a very long time so without food how do they survive how do they have very long uh, life it's because the in their body the sirtuins activity will be increased so now we had seen the mechanisms which cause cellular aging so is there something which can prevent or delay cellular aging yes who doesn't like to be young right so regular physical exercise being physically active itself has a beneficial effect because it provides a beneficial effect on the metabolism and it uh, keeps a person in a state of well being and second is a resveratrol it is a polyphenol which is normally present again in red wine and this is known to increase the sirtuins sirt1 is one of the sirtuin genes only so the sirtuin genes are being activated and spermidin spermidin is again a polyamine which is going to promote autophagy so autophagy is promoted so there is no misfolded protein accumulation so cell stress is being prevented over here uh metformin metformin is, as we all know it is one of the uh, drugs used for diabetes mellitus treatment it will act by um, acting on the amp kinase pathway so this metformin also has another activity it is going to inhibit a pathway called as nf kappa b pathway so nf kappa b pathway is actually involved in production of uh, inflammatory cytokines and inflammatory mediators so when this pathway is being uh, inhibited the inflammatory uh, cells are not going to be recruited and when inflammation decreases obviously the harmful effects of free radicals are not going to be there so uh, next one will be cations and n acetyl cysteine the cations are the ones which are present in green tea so these are antioxidants basically which scavenge the free radicals and there is something called as senolytics which are nothing but drugs which help in removing this senescent cells so normally when senescent cells are present they tend to uh, induce senescence in the surrounding cells by a bystander effect so the senescent cells are going to get accumulated over time so when that get uh, gets accumulated obviously the functionality of the uh, cell and the organ is going to be decreased so in order to prevent that we are going to remove these senescent cells with the help of these senolytics so one of the examples of senolytics is a navitoclax it acts by inhibiting bcl2 so bcl2 we all know it is an anti apoptotic protein so when bcl2 is being inhibited it is going to promote apoptosis of this senescent cells so in today's video we had seen about what are the mechanisms of cellular aging under which we had seen about dna damage cellular senescence in which the most important thing is telomere attrition and telomerase activity then coming to protein homeostasis defect and then coming lastly to the nutrient sensing defect in which the sirtuins had a important role okay thank you if you like my content consider subscribing and sharing it to your friends who also might benefit from this video thank you again